Welcome to Strategy Club in Jagger. This is the first of a, hopefully a series of tutorials about Jagger strategy. And for this series, I have a specialist on my side, and this specialist is Patrick. You might know me from uh, various international events. Uh, I'm Patrick from Pink Pain from Darmstadt. And in my team, I'm part of the coaching team, and um, I like uh, the very um, strategic um, part of Jugger, and that's why I'm here. Brilliant. So for the first part of our little series, we want to focus on the very basics. If you are forming a new team and ask yourself how could we uh, become better on short notice with not too much training, how could we have good experience on our first tournament or other games with other teams, then we have some strategy tips for you. Generally, in this series, we'll first focus on a theory and afterwards we will present you with some exercises which you can use to make your team, in fact, better. For the basics, let's start directly and get into the meta. Um, when you start Jagger and when you watch Jagger videos, you often see that the teams are charging in in a straight line. Now you might ask yourself, oh well, uh, shouldn't, wouldn't it be wiser to have a person, sort of a guardian, waiting at the goal or mount or mal, as it's called in Germany, to protect the mount uh, against the opponent's quick? Well, um, in fact, it would be a bad idea, and that's why even very experienced teams charge in on a, in a line, because as uh, soon as you only charge in with, for example, three players and leave the fourth player back as a guard at the uh, mound, then one of your three players will be overpowered and will have two opponents against him or herself. So it has turned out that charging in in a straight line is much wiser than leaving a player for some kind of protection. Once you have an enemy team where the people are able to play together again in, in, a, in some kind of an uh, overpowering situation, then in every case the underpowered person from the other team will always lose. Uh, you might think, yeah, but what if the, sing the single player is so good that uh, that he uh, can hit both uh, both other players and when they both strike at the same time one person with one spar cannot block both people and as you can uh, as you can see um now we have uh, the two against two in the middle yet still we have again again an overpowering situation by the blue team directly at the at the mount and they don't even have to um, defeat him as long as the the uh, yellow runner isn't hindering anymore or isn't in the way, the blue runner could just score. We started with a, th a three against four line, and very soon we had a th uh, we had like three against four on the whole uh, on the whole pitch. Um, you can see the um, both of the blue. Uh, uh, players in the middle, they don't have to do anything because the yellow team gave them an, very, a very big advantage from the beginning. So they can say, okay, we just stop these, these two people from going away and we're fine. So this is quite different from the standard setups in football, for example, where you have your um, specialist sort of your line of skimmage with the most uh, bulky players in the front and then the quarterback and stuff like that. The quick might be more likely to be a, a sort of quarterback there. Um, but in Jugger, yes, as you can see, it's quite essential that everyone goes in at the beginning and uh, that each one protects each other from being overpowered and outnumbered. It's always good to teach your team to charge in in a line and not to do something uh, like uh, running in in a jumble where you will maybe end up like this, 
what would happen here? We have a straight line for the uh, for the yellow team and a by far not straight line on the blue team. And in that case, um, you can see the yellow people from the middle could both just turn around and then they have a two against one on, on both sides. The um, the enemy uh, the enemy uh, the the blue quick is far away from from the jack. Uh, so the yellow uh, yellow quick could just get the jug. We can put get through th to the jug uh, and and retreat. Uh, then the jug is with uh, with them, and both the um, yellow pitch halves could do a one uh, do a two against one. We have again an, an overpowering situation. That player is also too far uh, too far away. Um, in mo most occasions, this or this or this player would be a chain, or a very, very of, of, uh, offensive player, and they would overpower uh, them too. And now, I mean, you can see where we're going. Absolutely. <laughs> it's 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 it should be over by by now. Both of the um, uh, the dual teams uh, will will just overpower the blue and forces and the uh, blue quick and this would be a very fast point and uh, the uh, the yellow team could even just uh, stall of the blue team right now because uh, the yellow enforcer here could just uh, challenge the other one so even if it's a yes. weaker player he could play defensively against the blue player and the blue player here would have to well try to attack the yellow player he couldn't turn around because otherwise he would be taken by the yellow player so uh, in fact a free player here could follow the quick and protect the quick uh, from interference by the other quick. Even with two straight lines, that's one of uh, um, our favorite um, play styles, where we have a very good enforcer on the uh, on the fur on the leftmost and the rightmost position of our uh, line, um, and uh, are very fast quick, and we just get the jack. The quick sees okay. Which of my an offensive enforcers will um, will break through, and then just decides to go on, on one uh, one side, and then he just uh, pushes them for, uh, forth. He just uh, says uh, like Patrick, go 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 on the runner, and and I I will not care about any enforcer at all. I will just hit the runner and then block off anyone that's uh, trying to hit my own quick. It's very very effective as you. Never remember you don't have to hit the um, every every um, enforcer on the pitch before you can uh, score or hit the runner. That's you could pretty... just you could just score with every five enemy players standing. Yes. And I've seen that in the past. <laughs> exactly, and that's it's very fun. Th that's quite essential, I think, um, that you uh, as soon as you can, you should get the mentality or the thinking out of your players that only because they are enforcers they have to take out every opponent because that's not the case they might only just stall their opponents or just attract their attention and distract their attention from your own quick so taking the opponents is sort of a nice addition but the most essential part is to get the opponent's attention away from the quick and from uh, the skull so for the next thing, uh, after we have had a look on the line and on the importance of holding the line, we come to a very interesting topic and that is the tasks of the players. Do not confuse the task of the players with the spars they are playing because the tasks are a bit of a different cup of tea. And Patrick, what would you say about the player tasks in a team? When you, uh, when you hear the task on, on, on the pitch, you think like ah the chain is the aggre uh, is uh, the aggre aggressive enforcer or or a, a player and maybe a shield would defend something, uh, and I would strongly recommend to uh, to differentiate more because um, you can of course to be very um, offensive with a with a shield you could theoretically do everything with with every spar of course there are better ones for different 
tasks. So which tasks do, you, do we have? The first one you might immediately think of is the offensive player, where you would just push in or uh, try to get as many uh, hits on enemies as possible. Then we have uh, a protection task. Um, in most most cases, it's uh, it's um, uh, an offensive. It's it's an uh, the anti chain is a different part, um, but protecting a chain or another offensive player. When I'm on the on the rightmost part of the pitch or the rightmost spot in the line, and um, there are different uh, different enemies, um, I will just. Uh, use these four to demonstrate. Um, I can I'm, imagine I am the yellow uh, 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 enforcer here. Uh, I will try to hit the blue, uh, blue uh, enemy as fast as possible. Um, they might be out, but I'm very much uh, pushed out of the line now. I mean, that's kind of intentional because I want to get to my opponent to hit them. Now the uh, next most player of the blue team could interfere and while i'm just hitting my opponent or just hit them uh, i could get st uh, struck from the side um, to prevent that uh, we need a protection task um, a protective player who uh, that just has one task protect me if any enemy player looks at it, it, a tiny bit too often to, uh, to me or seems like okay they want to uh, engage in a, in a contact with me they immediately immediately interfere sometimes it's it's enough to um, show presence like take a small step forward or do a do a um, uh, do a strike put uh, that doesn't need to put, but just just to give, put a bit, bit of pressure on them and uh, show a don't do don't do anything I don't want to want you to do. Um, or if they actually run run for me, hit them in the back. In the back. Sometimes it's enough, so I will not not be hit, or the the yellow uh, the the offensive enforcer will not be hit. Um, but in any case, that player would be out also. So we still have one player on this part of the pitch that's that could then take up the role of the uh, of the offensive player. That would be uh, a protection task. You could protect anything with anything. Again, every every spark can do uh, every task. Um, but um, I tend to like to play these um, um, positions, like protection positions, with um, a Q-tip or a long pomfer. You can stab them. You can't just hold your spar in when they come rushing um, and will hit. But you have to hit people from the sides. You have to you have to strike. You don't. You can't stab. So um, that's that might be personal preference. But I found it easier to fulfill this position uh, with um, Q-tips and long pump. Now we come to the next big task. The anti-chain. Yes, which is, which is sort of the classic position for uh, all yes. the, for, for normal teams, the classic position for protecting another player. <laughs> so yes. one of your own players. But as you just said, it's not limited to the chain. In fact, it's quite a useful mm -hmm. uh, tactic uh, uh, throughout the whole team, not only for the chain. But yes, come to the drama of the anti-chain player, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, the anti-chain or anti-aggressor um, or anti-offensive um, position, um, you play in some kind of a delay. Um, if they come pushing forward, you go backwards. You still stay in their reach and keep them in your uh, reach uh, because if you go too much back, you're, too, you're far you're too far away to be in uh, to be any sort of danger for them so they will just go straight to your uh, to your mate and that's a thing you don't want to have especially if it's uh, some 
very very fast enemy player yes, that's just uh, yeah. <laughs> dim 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 and then you have three enforcers down and the quick is just like oh, come on mate <laughs> <laughs> bad idea um so you um i'll just use the left side here because uh, in classic play the chain would be the uh, uh offensive uh, player uh and we just go with that with that um uh, you have a, you have a chain the, symbol the, uh, out, uh, up of course it. yes but um it's as you know it's it's not relevant which one it is it's just to I just use this side now. We will just use the um, this broken chain uh, uh, picture uh, to have to to display. This is a offensive player breaker. He's stopping the uh, of, um, uh, offensive player that the offensive player won't hit people. Hmm. Um, so um, you try to go, to uh, um, stay in their reach and go back. Um, if you if in the end you and they are like here and the offensive player the enemy offensive player won't run away that's quite that's okay that's quite okay as long as long as your mates do their their task and uh, uh and or fulfill their task it's no problem um uh Why but, if you, but if you but if you're here and they, they are there then this will be a problem because then would be and this would be the action to take for the uh, blue enforcer um but we don't want that <laughs> <laughs> so um of course uh you are allowed to strike them if they make mistakes like um if they think oh i will reach i reach i will reach over there then you can take your uh you, you uh, can take the opportunity and uh, try to hit them but the main task is just uh, keeping them busy keeping them busy so they won't run anywhere um which is about it about the um anti anti-aggressor uh, position we do have another task the center is a center task uh, you know that little picture over here the jack if you have a fast runner and they they uh, get it by this by them uh, themselves without anyone interfering that's fine but that's not the case in most of the most of the time so um if you have your two uh, lines in the middle they just arrived and or, or just they're trying to arrive and they're on the run in um and let me just get the yellow line they're also in the on the run in uh the runners are very eager to get the jack and um maybe that one is even a little faster um and then those those four people they can contest the jug. As you don't need to let the runners game it, game it out. Sometimes the runner will just be uh, faster. Maybe this runner might be fast enough, but maybe this enforcer is fast enough also. And then if the runner is getting for the jug, the, the enforcer hits the jug, hits the hand, it's, it's him or the, 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 uh, the quick, and then the quick is out and that's not good. So we might want to not just have a quick in the middle, but also have the enforcers do stuff. So there's different possibilities for this uh, task. Uh, one could be just uh, try to um, try to fish the jack with your spar. Um, that's seen most of the times, especially if you don't have the runner of the century. Um, like Kurt from Rigo Mortis, he's very, very, very fast and might get the jack from by by himself. But most most teams don't have a court. But most most teams don't have a court, so we need to uh, accommodate that. So we have might maybe uh, enforcers who try to fish it, or another possibility um, 
is seeing if the enemy uh, uh, quick is trying to hit uh, all, of course. Try to uh, a little bit play around, and I like I like uh, psycho games in Jagger. Simulate fishing for the jack. This is what the um, what the blue enforcer here. Uh, this this blue enforcer sees. This yellow enforcer is actually focused on that blue enforcer, and is just faking fishing the jack. And then the blue enforcer thinks, "Oh, he's easy. He's an easy target." And then the yeah, and then the yellow enforcer is like, "I'm not an easy target. You are my target." And then, of course, the blue enforcers uh, will be out because uh, he underestimated the opponent. The center is uh, completely open. The next blue enforcer is here, because so. The enemy quick, the blue quick will be out directly after it. So bottom line is uh, right here that you have these, what you call psychic game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that you the center, seem, the exactly, that you seem to protect uh, the jug sort of, or seem to want to attack the opposing quick, uh, but in fact are uh, keeping an eye on your own opponent who might think that you're focusing on the opposing quick and take him out uh, when he's well, not uh, has not uh, doesn't have his guard up. As soon as you as you have taken out this one player, and as soon as your quick has managed to get the skull, um, you might uh, you might try with your quick uh, to go around this way because as soon as this one here, as your own enforcer has taken out uh, his or her opponent, um, the other team might panic because they fear that they get overpowered on this side here and so they might lose focus on this side so depending on how experienced your team is you can already try to use it to go around the opposing team and score a point while the opposing team already or still is sort of in panic about the successful attack if you are fast enough and if these two here uh, are still in an engagement Now we come to part two. As mentioned, we uh, do not only want to focus on pure theory, because that's interesting, but doesn't really help uh, on the pitch, but we also want to offer some training possibilities to really get better in these aspects that we just mentioned. And so we'll start with the line. Um, one thing that I like to do in trainings when I have a newbie sort of, so people who didn't play Jagger before, uh, who just started playing Jagger, especially also in schools when you have younger and very motivated players, is um, to let them charge in um, in a normal game setting sort of. So you have two goals, you have your pitch and you have four players on each side and uh, the fifth player, the quick of course and you let them charge to the center uh, as if they would want to get uh, possession of uh, the skull or the jack, but you do not let them to sort of clash. You do not want to have duels. You forbid duels here. You tell them they have to stop as close as possible um, to have a, a small mansur, so uh, a distance where they can could start fencing, sort of in a dual situation, but not closer. They shouldn't charge into each other or through each other, but they should stop. At first was letting the teams stop at the middle at your signal. So as soon as the uh, teams reach the middle, you give a signal stop and they should stop. And later when they manage to do that and manage to charge in in lines, in solid lines, and not just in a jumble like this here, um, <laughs> then you can start to tell them, okay, now try to get over the jack. So stage one is just stop at the middle and do not clash. And part two would be try to be the first over the jack and sort of push the, the opponents, well, not push them back, but stop them before they reach the center line and the jack line. So that would be a very basic training um, to get 
into the minds of people that they shouldn't only clash into each other with as much speed and as much force as possible because we are not in football here and some people might <laughs> possibly associate Jagger uh, with football at first. So that might be quite an interesting idea. Especially for keeping lines, we have just all players that are attending the, tra uh, the training uh, session and um, have them line up. Then we, we choose one player to give the tempo. And if everyone keeps in line with their neighbor, every, the, the line will, will stay a stand perfectly and it will, will move perfectly. First uh, level is just going forward, but then second level, of course, the, uh, the, the, the trend giver or the, the, um, uh, the focus point will, or focus person will also go back and forth and back and forth and forth and forth and back and forth and this is very helpful to have this peripheral peripheral view of where's my uh wait where, where are my mates where's where are my direct neighbors um to keep in touch with them there is another one for for this that uh, might be a bit a bit a bit similar um, and that's the line command game where all players uh, line up in a line and the trainer uh, sort of gives a specific commands. Um, for example, they, they line up in one line and start, uh, well, jogging easily. And then the trainer says, run, and everyone charges as fast as they can. And then the uh, trainer says, for example, uh, back to the goal. Um, and all people have to turn around and run again. Um, and the trainer regularly also says, stop. And when they say stop, the line should be a solid line again even if while charging people are uh, more in front than the others but they have to sort of uh, align the line as soon as they can uh, again so that they always have a solid line when the trainer calls stop just to train the reaction of um, uh, of the players both staying in line even in situations where you have to charge at full speed and realign as soon as possible and uh, to train sort of the hearing that at a command of their fellow players, for example, uh, back to the goal, um, they immediately learn to react and turn around and charge back uh, to the goal. Especially when we have um, more new uh, p players uh, in, a, in, a, in a session. Um, we have uh, like one team that is playing normally and the, oppo uh, the opponents um, we'll get a call from the side with a, with some kind of code word. Stop is usually overloaded with someone is hurt. Uh, please stop the game. So like a code word like wall or even some silly ones like apple, apple or something. Uh, just get a code word that uh, everyone knows. This is the trigger word for we build a line here. Mm -hmm. I think it is a familiar uh, exercise uh, like that the what you just described, uh, but uh, directly taken to the pitch. Uh, one very very important uh, thing um, for for different tasks is self evaluation. It doesn't help if you're uh, like in training or even on a, on a tournament and your uh, strategic, strategic commander asks you uh, or asks for you, uh, can you play this position or can you play, can you fulfill this task? And you're like, um, uh, I don't know. Try to uh, evaluate or, or think of um, what um, task am I good at or Furthermore, um, what do you want to do? And in training, this is perfect. You can just try out different tasks. Today, do I want to um, train or learn more on um, or the uh, aggressive enforcer? Or do I want to be an uh, offensive player stopper? Like the, for example, anti-chain or anti-aggressor. Uh, uh, anti um, do I want a protector for my own uh, offensive player, uh, or, or or do I want to be in in the center position where I have to sprint and um, contest the jug uh, and learn more about that? And um, uh, especially especially when you uh, are new to the game or 
quite new to the game, uh, you could uh, just think of it uh, at home, like, what am, am I in the mood uh, today? Or uh, like view different um, videos or watch watch other uh, Jagger, uh, Jagger players and see, okay, what are, are they doing? Um, they're in the middle and they try, uh, they're enforcing the Jack. Does this look interesting to me? Um, we have this very uh, skilled anti-chain that's just stopping the, uh, the chain every run in and the chain can't do anything. Um, uh, it, wow, that, that's interesting. I want to try that. Um, and this moment you, sh you should cease and in the next training, uh, or maybe if you're uh, some kind of a uh, forgetting person like me, uh, you could just write it down. Um, uh, when I, uh, a, few, a few years back, when I was uh, getting more into different tasks and not just going on the pitch and playing uh, and more analyzing what I'm, what, my, uh, what I'm doing myself um, and what I'm doing on the pitch, um, I just made a list. I just took a sheet of paper and wrote down what uh, does interest, uh, interest me or what I want to uh, learn. Um, the sparse, of course, you can also write down, I want to play, I want to learn more about shield or playing with shield, but uh, especially with tasks, this is very helpful. So you can see, uh, you can also do like, okay, um, I know I can uh, enforce the um, jack by uh, just fishing it, uh, but I cannot just yet um, uh, do like this psycho game or um, ignore the jack. And the enemy quick sometimes also important to not hit them because you know your opponent is uh, is just waiting for you to trying to hit the uh, the enemy uh, enemy quick so you uh, could just write down okay i'm good at uh, you have this task and these uh, subtasks are uh, i'm familiar with and uh, but but these other tasks i'm or subtasks i'm not that familiar with but i want to get better at it and you could uh, just write it down and have some kind of a checklist or um, a checklist with commentaries uh, where you also can comment, okay, what's difficult for me? So you can just um, communicate with your, um, with with a coach or another ex uh, experienced player to, um, to get more information about the part you're struggling with. Um, this helped me well, very much until I reached a point where I was confident in uh, analyzing myself and seeing myself, okay, that is a problem. How could I uh, tackle that? Um, but until that, I was, uh, it was very helpful for me to have uh, an experienced player explain me, okay, I'm, I'm hitting a wall here. Can you help me break it down? Yeah, very good. Um, and um, yeah, then you attend the, uh, uh, the training session and uh, you just take out your sheet of paper uh, or you memorize it and uh, uh, be open about it and tell your coach hey, today uh, today and if it fits the um, the, uh, the situation or the uh, exercise we're doing I'd like to play this position I'd like to play um, uh, the uh, enforcing or the, the, the aggressive enforcer uh, today and I want to uh, especially this aspect, offensive one. Um, you could try just one-on-one, -on -one, um, for example. Start with one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, one player is just defending. That's, um, of course, you could train in the same time. This player could uh, could uh, train uh, stopping an, an, an enforcing player, and the uh, the uh, offensive player will just try to hit them. The defensive player won't try to hit you mm -hmm. but you want to try them and you don't know how hard it is to try to hit people that just don't care about about hitting you but just want to defend themselves so just um, the defender game sort of mm -hmm. yes um then um of course the um uh, contesting a game in the middle um first thing is um if you want to contest anything, you need some kind of speed. Um, if you're just um, just too slow, I'm afraid it's not po not possible to enforce anything in the middle, or or, or to to contest the jack if 
the runners and the jug and the and the other enforcers are already gone when you uh, once you reach the, that spot. Um, so you could just uh, do sprinting exercises. For um, sprinting, uh, there is one. I mean, that, that's not really the topic here. But uh, just just shortly, there's just one exercise which I like to do also uh, when people have warmed up, sort of first, so a post warm up exercise, and that is to uh, let them sprint in a regular round. But um, at your command down, they go down as if they would have been hit. They have the sparse with them mm -hmm. in this uh, scenario. And then uh, at the next command, go, 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 or even counting down th three, two, one, go, 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 they have to sort of jump up or better to, to sprint as fast as possible as if the opposing quick boot would be just on their way to the goal or to the mount and they want to catch them. And then, it's, uh, uh, then they, they slow down after some seconds, you give them a signal again, they slow down and are still jogging, and then you call them again down, they go down, and so forth. So there, there you have uh, sort of this, uh, this uh, sprint together with getting up uh, after being hit or after being taken uh, in one thing, which you can also integrate into your warm-up uh, schedule, sort of. That's a very good um, exercise, I think. Um... The next uh, or, the, or other exercises for the um, center uh, part uh, and contesting the jug um, might be just uh, go in on uh, like two and uh, two and two or three and three with uh, uh, each uh, team has a runner. Um, just put it put a jug in the middle. Uh, the two and two part is like. Contesting a jug without a runner uh, uh, have, uh, being there, the three and three part would be um, uh, having a runner, and from that you can um, just uh, uh, try to test uh, test it and contest it, and you could set goals like um, once uh, uh, any uh, quick will, has gotten away. Um, the round is over and we start for, uh, start from the beginning because we just want to have this center uh, contest uh, con uh, contesting uh, part um, we don't need to play it all out um, so we have just this uh, run in part we, we run in contest the jerk uh, see uh, and uh, yeah try to have our own quick get the jerk and uh, then uh, once a quick has the jug, you can start over. Another um, stop condition could be um, once both enemy enforcers are down or something like that. The protection part. Mm -hmm. If you're protecting an of, uh, your own offensive uh, player, you could um, um, have a game two and two mm -hmm. where um, you have uh, one offensive player that's trying to hit uh, the opponent the enemy team will, at in the moment the, the offensive player has made a strike, or for example a chain, they just shot out, and they need to uh, to get the chain going again. The chain just uh, made a uh, made a strike, and in that moment, no matter what, if both are up, they both go on the chain. If only one is up, that one player that's not gotten the hit from the chain or the the offensive player will immediately try to hit uh, hit this one and that's training this person the this in this case the yellow enforcer to to just go uh, on the uh, to try to protect their their own uh, uh, mm -hmm. player or at the very least hit the people in the back brilliant idea just, mm -hmm. In the end, if everything goes uh, according to the uh, uh, the training goal, uh, uh, if it's if it's successful, this this player, this yellow enforcer, will the last person standing from these four, and this would be very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent, very good. Okay, um, having a look on the time, I think uh, our viewers will get a bit tired <laughs> and have a good <laughs> schedule to work on until next time so i think we will have a break for today for this part our next topic might be um getting more into detail with tasks uh, i think mm -hmm. very um, good idea 
So, look forward to our next part, which will go, as said, a bit more into the detail of tasks, as far as we can say now. <laughs> if we don't get other ideas, which are much more important, it will change. But uh, no, uh, I think we will stick to it, probably. Um, Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with us for all this time. And please try it out. Try uh, the different training elements. Think about the theory. Uh, write down your own experiences in the comment section to share it with the others and with us, of course. If you have any ideas or anything that you would like to share with us both here that we should address in uh, a future session, then please feel free to contact us. Uh, either through the comments, through Ooze Training Slugger Discord, through the Jagger Org Forum, uh, wherever uh, you can find us. This is Patrick and me under the name of Ooze <laughs> in the Jagger World. And uh, share your thoughts with us so we might be able to, well, integrate it into, our, uh, into one other uh, session there. So, thanks for watching. Thank you, Patrick, for sharing your very, very interesting thoughts. And, you well, yes, uh, really, I think this will be a quite an in-depth study of uh, Jagger strategy in the future. I am looking so forward very much to our next session. Me too. Thank you very much and see you again next time, hopefully soon. Until then. Bye. Bye. Woo! <laughs>